So, it's Sunday. Slightly a day off, but not really. Uh, today, we are testing a turbocharger supplied by another company. I'm not gonna name the name of the company unless they uh, want me to. Um, specs on the unit are, it's a 5482 compressor wheel, eight blade, and a 7660 turbo wheel. So kind of neat, the turbine housing is what appears to be a 14 centimeter with a perpendicular gate like we see on S300s and most HX35, HX40s. What eventually happened was, this truck has a header on it. Um, the header, I guess, only fits uh, HE351s and HX Superhero 9s. It puts the compressor cover on these other housings too close to one of the runners on the header, and in that case, I could not fit the turbo without a spacer, and if I did a spacer, I'd have to modify the charge piping and then exhaust and everything else, and I didn't really want to do that, so I spent yesterday pulling off the header, pulling off the hater pipe, the dump tube, whatever you want to call it, and getting a OEM manifold. I went to the back of the shop. I have like 15 of the things. Found the one that measured out the least wrist, um, shrinked and put that one on. So we're gonna go over here and go over the truck. The truck's a 94, 2500. Here's our charger. Don't mind all the hoses. This is a test meal for testing different products on the dyno. It's, not ready for the drag strip yet. We do plan on drag racing, but drag racing is kind of like a byproduct of having it. The main use was for dyno testing products. It has a maxed and balanced 180 pump. Um, ASC is all intact. I'm actually going to turn it down. We dynoed it the other day and it did uh, 392 with no tuning. So no tuning and what I think is the rack unlocked full rack travel. 392, which looks like the average on a set of 5x9 160 horsepower pump injectors, which is what's in the truck, were slightly above average. The average seemed to be uh, 300 to 380 was the most consistent. Um, there's an old bracket that we used to sell still in this truck. We, I prototyped a lot of parts on this truck. We originally built it back in 2015 or 2014. It had a WH1C on it, which had the normal thrust was worn out, took that off, put on an HY35 for a while, and then built a header for it, and then put an HE351 on it, and then put a bigger compressor wheel in the 351, and then later on found out that doesn't work. Uh, to get the downpipe to fit, I got this neat little adapter that came off of a garbage truck. Um, it goes from the two and a half inch V-band to the 351. So it'll bolt up to the downpipe. The only thing is I had to jack the downpipe, downpipe up with a jack to get it to align. So it's not optimized for the truck, but for a dyno test, it's fine. It leaks a little bit, but um, post exhaust is fine. I have, a, I have a GoPro on the BOV just to watch the BOV, make sure it's not leaking anything. Um, we're gonna have cameras on the ground and then a camera inside to watch the gauges. I did from our last run. Um, has a Keating billet front cover on it. So I took this off and backed the timing out about two to four degrees from where it was. It was pin timed at 20. I have not checked what the timing light, what it actually is running. It was high as far as engine noise goes and spool wise goes. It did not want to spool up very well with it pinned at 20 um, with these five by nine. So I backed it down, sounds a lot better. Probably gonna make the exact same horsepower. I'm going to, with our home brew AFC controller, I'm gonna uh, dial it back and run the minimum amount possible. That way we can actually see the stack clean up. So I'm going to get the generator turned on and get all the equipment out and go from there. So this is a stock manifold, nothing fancy. Uh, here's the charger. The only difference is flip this around the header. You just take this and turn it around for it to work right. It's the adapter, uh, comp cover. It's a cast wheel. So we're going to watch RPMs. We're probably not going to go past 3,000 RPMs unless we need to. 3,000, 3,200, probably the most. I'm going to be watching boost pressure to make sure it's not over boosting. Um, it has our tappet cover on it with no vents. Um, so we use some industrial covers I had laying around that. I wouldn't necessarily want to sell to anybody just because they're different from the rest of them. This uses like a 24 valve seal um, for the bolts and this uses an o-ring 
on 94 to 98 12 valves. These O-ring, um, your industrial stuff off of generators use like a grommet that you'd see on 24 valve, but it has the two vents up here. All the vacuum stuff's been plugged off to fix that. Um, these are just, this used to go to the external gate and yeah, it's a mess, but it keeps the BOV closed and it keeps the boost leaks in check. So it's not a, nothing to write home about, but it does the job for dyno testing. EGT gauge is on the back three. Uh, so we should be uh, ready to rock and roll. So let's get to the next part. All right, so we've made two poles. The first pole uh, is 307 horsepower. Uh, not what we wanted. Um, I did pull two degrees out, things starts and idles way better than it did. The other thing that we did do is turn the fuel way down. Um, so with the fuel turned way down, I turned it up. It was turned all the way down to zero and then turned up uh, four turns on the, the PSI regulator to the AFC. Um, I went another two and we picked up 36 wheel horsepower, but we we're actually still low on boost. We're only seeing about 30, 33 pounds of boost. It doesn't look like it's falling as RPM's going up. That's what I was, that's a wasp. That's what I was kind of watching um, on all the videos. The next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna set up a thermal image camera to watch the intercooler. It's currently 99 degrees out here. Um, and I have a GoPro on the inside to watch the gauges now. Set up a different camera, I'm gonna put that camera probably back to outside. And then this camera is going to be hooked to the FLIR thermal imaging, thermal imaging camera. Sorry. Uh, and I want to just watch uh, heat soak on the intercooler, see if I can't see that. That's the whole reason I bought it was to try and see if I can't watch how the intercooler is handling heat. Um, so I put some spacers in the system to try and get more boost pressure out of it, kind of jerry-rigged it. But hopefully that'll reduce the arm travel and get us more boost pressure. We do know that it'll do 40 pounds of boost on the turbo that was on there, and we do know that it'll do 392 wheel horsepower. Um, so that's what we're playing with. I'm gonna turn up the fuel another, if we go another two turns, I'm gonna see if that results in another 36 horsepower added. It is hotter than it was before, but the uh, dyno software should account for that. Um, so I'm gonna get the dyno started and get ready to do the next pull. So update, been out here all day. I've made uh, four poles on this turbocharger, two and two, making changes, and I've been stuck at 338. So 336, 338, it's been consistent. So just for the heck of it, put the boost leak tester on and found out that the blow off valve is leaking from a part that's not even normal to leaking. It's not something that I didn't forget the Titan. It's not because the O-ring that seals the opening in the blow-off valve is um, no good. It's actually a, one of the manufactured parts that's inside the blow-off valve was leaking. It's a threaded part that the banjo bolt threads into. It's like an insert. And that was leaking pretty good. And if that is leaking, what would happen is it won't hold dome pressure on top of the BOV, allowing the BOV to creep and that would negate a lot of the boost. I've been stuck at 27 to 30 pounds of boost. No matter what, I got the wastegate uh, safety wire shut. Actually, not all the way shut. It has a little bit of travel. So I changed out the entire intake horn for one that does not have a blow off valve. I'm going to make one more hit. It's 730 um, and see what it does. I'm really going to watch that boost gauge. Hopefully we see that 350 number. So here we go. So we're gonna go over the grass from the poles. Um, it shows a blue one, but I don't think the blue one um, is on here. The main thing, I just wanted the red and the green. So the red is after changing the intake horn out to one that doesn't have a blow off valve on it. So the blow off valve one's a three and a half inch intake horn. 
the non-blow-off valve is a three inch one and we can pretty clearly see that the one had the blow-off valve in it with the thread insert that was leaking off dome pressure was allowing the blow-off valve to lift was making it harder to build boost at starter run and I noticed this on the boost gauge as well when I was staging it it was way easier to stage it up to 10 pounds of boost um, than it was with the three and a half inch intake horn with the BOV. So it wasn't the three and a half inch intake horns fault. It was the fact that the BOV um, was leaking dome pressure and not holding the dome down. So uh, just eliminating it from the circuit that solved the whole thing and was able to stage this thing a lot faster. So with, we can see that the intake horn as far as size wise goes made no difference in the horsepower. That peak boost pressure, I could not get it to boost over, I think I got 33 PSI at most. I could not get more out of that. I safety wired the gate almost all the way shut. Um, I did everything I could. I had wrapped foil up and put it in this thing. But to like limit how far the gate can go and I safety wired it shut eventually and took the BOV totally out of the equation. It does not have an external wastegate anymore because it's on a stock manifold. Still cannot get more than 33 pounds of boost. That being said, at 33 uh, PSI, it did uh, 300 and actually I think there's a 348 one. Uh, 346. The goal was for it to make 350 horsepower. Um, it was 100 something degrees on the dyno. On any other dyno, it's gonna do 350, no problem. So the turbo is supposed to be rated for 350 horsepower. It did 346, 720 on an inertia. Um, so I'd say on any other dyno we're gonna see, and any other day that's not 100 something degrees, we're gonna see 350. Yeah. So you see peak torque is 2300 RPMs. Um, it has a peak horsepower window about, I'd say 2500 to 3000. Torque starting to come down so fast at about, um, you know, at 3,000, this line would just continue down and it would get steeper and steeper the farther out we got. And this number would start to, we'd also see this fall off because of cylinder VE falling off. So 720 foot pounds torque at 2300 RPMs on the inertia and 346.62 horsepower, about 2600 RPMs. And this actually puts it really close to what we would see on a stalker. On a stock unit, peak torque could probably actually be closer to about 2200, uh, right in this area, 2200, 2, um, so that looks like at the 14 centimeter housing plus the bigger inducer on the turbine wheels moved it out to uh, about 2300 because the x deuce and turbo is the same size, we didn't see it pushed out too much farther. It's still a 60 millimeter x deucer. So the kind of only thing I can come up with is the 54 millimeter compressor wheel at these engine speeds. At the rate that the engine was consuming air versus the rate that the compressor was compressing air, um, the engine was consuming so much that we could not get it on the inertia dyno to do more than 33 PSI. So the day prior we had a 62, 67 on it that did 40. So we know things fully capable of pushing a larger unit to a higher pressure. We took it off to test this one. The next one we're gonna put on is either an S300 or a stock HX35 to get a baseline for that on the truck and make more videos for you. Um, but we can see the big difference between fixing a boost leak. So this is a, a good demonstration of how much a boost leak can affect you. We can see here that I had a hard time even staging the truck um, down below 2000. With the boost leak and without the boost leak, I had no issues getting it staged at 1750. Now you see we've picked up um, we went from about 650 foot pounds at 2000 RPMs versus the other setup with the boost leak was only doing about 425 foot pounds. It's the same numbers on both sides. So maybe it was curious, I know it says horsepower, but the, it's 400, 400 how this graph works. So it's easier to read. Uh, 420 foot pounds at 2000 rpm so we picked up a big jump there we would notice this on the street this jump would be even more because the load on the street is going to be higher than what the load the dyno can provide so the horsepower peak actually on the street to on the inertia tends to stay the same um we'll just see the torque go so the horsepower and torque would go up through the low and the mid-range on 
the street and it would go even higher if you had a trailer. So with the trailer, you have even more load. So these numbers go up even more, but the peak number of 350 wheel, 346 to be exact, 350 wheel with the turbo rate for, will be the same consumption rate that we should see on the street as on the inertia dyno. So this is really cool. I ran this thing a total of six times for um, two times with it how it was, two times with the gate locked down, and two times with the blow-off valve completely removed from the system. Um, I trying to chase more pressure and I just couldn't get it. So this is how we're going to end the day. We're going to pull that turbo off and get another one put on. I want to do a little outro. The truck's still on there. The turbo hasn't gotten taken off yet. I'm going to unstrap it and get it off the dyno before I change the turbo out and get another one put on. I'm going to service the roller. So we're going to grease the bearings for the roller. Make sure those are good. That uses a very special type of grease for those basically they're huge pillow block bush, uh, bearings that are a pain to grease. I, it's, and it honestly would be no easier if it was a in-ground versus it being a mobile chassis dyno because all this mobile chassis dyno is is a trailer with a big cutout in it to hold the in-ground version of the dyno. So there's not really, it wouldn't be any easier if it was in-ground versus this. They're fun, but grease them. I don't want to have to ever, hopefully service those bearings as far as uh, replacing them because it's a it's like a pain to get them out. So there's the truck. It's done 392. It is so far its highest number with the 350 horsepower turbo. It did 346 wheel horsepower with it with the dyno temperature being um, the temperature on the dyno being about 100 and I think it was 101 or 114 degrees somewhere in there. It's hot. So thank you for watching. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Um, if the owner of this turbocharger, the manufacturer, wants me to just close the name, I'm going to put it down below. Uh, other than that, uh, have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Quick bonus video here at the end. As you can see, this is the startup. On the right-hand side, that is the trans cooler. So you can see it does get warmer on the bottom, and it is cooling as the fluid goes all the way up to the top and back down, and then re-enters the transmission.